Hello my lovelies, how are you? I hope you're all okay. Happy, happy Wednesday. Um, <clears throat> I, you'll have to excuse me, I'm covered in bits and I've been sewing all day. I've been working from home today and the loads and loads of sewing. So, uh, so yeah, uh, it's, been a, it's been a good day, productive day. A um, couple of things. Uh, Sarah mentioned yesterday about the uh, modern Irish chain um, class. Um, if you are free and you'd like to join us, we have got some spaces left. We uh, might have to cancel it um, if we don't get another couple of people on it. So if you've been thinking about joining us and haven't got round to it yet, please do get booked on. Um, what else was I going to say to you? Oh, we've had our first challenge quilt in as well. We had one in the post today, which is lovely. Um, so we've had that first one in. So if you're doing the trip around the world challenge, um, you've, you've got ages yet. You've got till like 20... Did I say the 25th? I think it's the 25th of October. So you've got a few weeks yet. So um, a few weeks, a couple of weeks. Yeah, because <laughs> it's October already. How is it October? <coughs> Sorry, you have to excuse me. I am getting over a cold. Um, I managed to come down with a cold at the weekend and I am still coughing my guts up, which is delicious, delightful I am. So uh, let's say hello to some people. Hi, Natalie. Hi, Jackie. Hi, Anne. Hi, Liz. Hello, my darlings. How are, hopefully you're all okay. Um, so yeah, I think that's all the news, um, we've, yeah, um, workshop and challenge post, first one's in, so yay, hi Lindy Lou, how are you darling? Um, the, oh, that was the other thing as well, um, so you should, if you've joined, if you've signed up to do the postcard swap, you know, the mini, uh, fabric postcard thing, uh, if you've signed up to do the swap, you should have had an email from Sean now, um, pairing you up with um, somebody else you need to contact that person there's obviously an email address you need to contact that person uh, and just give them your address and stuff so that we're not holding everybody's addresses because of data protection so you just need to contact the person directly double check if you haven't had an email yet from Sean if you haven't been paired up double check it hasn't gone into the junk folder because we did have one lady who contacted us and was like I haven't, I haven't had any details but she found it in the junk so we we like to party in there sometimes it's sometimes in the spam or the junk folder so double check if you did sign up and you haven't heard from us you should have done by now okay um so that was that i knew there was something else i had to remind you guys of so um that's about it we're going to crack on we're going to do a bag tonight um i've called it an aracata bag which is um a form of or it's another basically word for origami because oh sorry now i've got hiccups i've down some water to stop me coughing and now i've got hiccups um because it's, we're kind of going to fold the fabric and it's got some interesting folds in it. So that's, I've just picked that name for that reason. Uh, hi Maria, hi Marion, hi Moira, hi Eileen. Hello my darlings. Um, so we're going to go straight over to the overhead and I'm going to show you this little bag, okay? So um, this can be done from, hang on, move that out of the way, two fat quarters, okay? This is literally two fat quarters, this little bag. Um, I've done um, a very subdued one on the outside. I've just used this um, black thatched fabric but i've used one of these i used this on the inside look at this this is crazy this is brand new in i don't think it's on the website yet but um if you did want any of these there's six in the range they are so cool <laughs> this is just these are crazy it's called a uh, snack shack um and it's it's like sort of pop art american pop art but all with food and i just love this i think it's brilliant um, there's this crazy one that's got like burgers and hot dogs and fries and all sorts on it. Um, there's one that's got tacos on it. It's one that's got pizza on it. The other one, other one we can use tonight is the donut one, which I think is really, really good. Um, you haven't heard from your postcard swappy, although I have contacted her. Cool. It's always worth dropping another quick email just to in case you've gone into their spam folder as well. But, um, it, you know, so people might be on holiday or something, but let us know. OK, guys. Um, yeah, this one's got like all little donuts on it, which I really, really liked. I think if you were making things like, um, you know, maybe oven gloves or um, stuff like that for uh, Christmas presents. Oh, my God. It's like the Stones logo. It is, isn't it? <laughs> Those lips look just like the Rolling Stones logo. It's fab. Um, I, I just think this is really a little bit of craziness. I love the idea of using this as for bag linings or, you know, something that's really crazy on the inside, subdued on the outside and crazy on the inside. So um, I don't think it's on the website yet because Sarah's been super busy this week. I don't think she's managed to get it on. But if you did want any, 
Um, we'll put a link up when it gets onto the website or you can always ring the shop. If you just want a fat quarter, because you fancy doing it as a lining of this bag, one of these ones, then um, you can always ring and we can do you just a fat quarter um, if you didn't want a full half meter, okay? So I'm going, like I said, I'm gonna use the uh, the donuts tonight because I think it's cool. I love this. You've got your partner, amazing, lovely. They're crazy mad, they really are. I just, I think they're really cool. I just think it's different. If you're maybe making for like teenagers, maybe like journal covers or reading pillows, or not reading pillows, but you know, like tablet stands and stuff like that, they're just, they're fun. I just think they're fun and different. Um, so, and I think, yeah, I think there's five in the range that we've got. There's pizza, there's the, the two that I've shown you, the, all of them, and the donuts. There's pizza, there's tacos, and there's one other, which I can't remember what we've got, but they, they're lovely. I like them, little bit of craziness. So you're gonna need two rectangles for this little bag. So I'm using um, a grunge, just a pink grunge, because I thought I wanted to pick up this like, hot pinky color on the donuts. Um, and it's also got a little bit sort of blue in it as well, which was nice and picked it up. Two rectangles, which basically you can get out fat quarters, all right? So they need to be 22 inches long by 14 and a half inches wide, okay? So I'll cut two, that one's 22 by 14 and a half this way. You also need two pieces of strap in. Now, this one, I just made my own straps, okay? They need to be 14 inches long, and I've just made my own straps on this one out of the black thatched, but you could use cotton webbing. So I've just cut two pieces of cotton webbing, and because I didn't want them to be plain white, I've just used some of the leftover bit of the um, fat quarter. Um, if I just grab the end of this, you can see all I did was, it was a two inch strip, and I just folded over the two edges like that, popped it on top of the webbing, and then stitched it down, just so that my webbing kind of ties in with the bag a little bit. Okay, um, Carol, you've got your partner, brilliant. Hi, Margaret, how are you, lovely? So I pre-done I pre these ready, okay? They're 14 inches long, okay? And obviously you need two of them for your straps. So, first things first, now I did this one subdued on the outside, crazy on the inside. I'm gonna do this one the other way round, just for the hell of it. Um, so on the short end, the 14 and a half inch end, we want to make a couple of little marks, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna mark in three and a half inches both sides to start with. So I'm gonna mark in three and a half that side, put a little mark there. And then three and a half that side, put a little mark there, okay? And then we're gonna start by adding our straps on. So I'm gonna do this as the outer. So um, I want them to, so you want my, I want my strap to be face down so it's right sides to right sides. So when it pops up, it's the right way, okay? And I'm gonna put that on the inside of the mark, okay? So I've got this edge on the inside of the mark. I'll just pop a pin in there a second like that and then I'm gonna pull this all the way around making sure it's not twisted and do it that side as well okay like that and then flip it over and do exactly the same on the other end so how are you all how is everybody are you all okay everybody well I hope so are you up to anything interesting Please do talk to me because otherwise it's very boring if it's just me talking to you lot. So other side, so right side to right side like that. So I know that that's touching. Tuck that one on there. Grab a pin like that. And then wiggle it around like that. Okay, so. All I'm going to do now is I'm going to whip it over to the machine. I'm just going to tack that into place so it's nice and you know, I can take the pins out and it's secure before we start messing with it. So over to the machine like that. Now I've just got my normal foot on. I'm going to use, this may basically going to be a three eighths of a seam allowance on the main seams, but because I don't want this little bit to show, I'm just going to go about a quarter of an inch. Just tack that one in. Working too hard, not enough sewing time. Oh, Sandra, it's not fair, is it? It's no fun at all. Hopefully, hopefully you'll get some sewing time soon, lovely. What are you working on? Anything interesting? Here we go, pop that one in. Like that means I can take those pins out now. I won't stab myself later. 
like that. You could wad this up, bag up as well if you wanted to. Um, I've chosen not to, uh, but you can if you want to. You could put wadding or bogle or just a bit of H640, something like that in there, just to give it a bit more body. Tap that one in. Hi Melba, how are you, lovely? Moira, it's really cold again tonight, so curled up with a quill tomorrow. I know, I actually put the heating on tonight. It got really, really cold in the sewing room. I mean, it gets cold in this room anyway. Um, but yeah, I popped the heat on because I was like, we're not, not having it, though. You work in a school, it's full on. Oh, God bless you. Yeah. It's, uh, oh, it's not a lot. It's, I was going to say, it's a couple of weeks till half term as well, isn't it? Right, back over we go. Like that. Okay. And then we're going to put the lining on top. All right. So like that so this is going to be my lining and that's going to go right sides down like that and we're going to pin in this edge first okay so i'm just going to make make that fit line up all of those edges like that she has used some clips on the webbing bits just for ease make sure it's nice and straight Ooh, hang on sorry two seconds give it a shake there we go you know what don't I don't I want not to go straight. There it is. Like that. Pop a clip in there. Early retirement from the NHS today. Ah, oh, well, I hope you get to enjoy your retirement, lovely. Have you got lots of lovely plans? Are you going to be travelling? Is it extra sewing time? What are you going to be doing? Congratulations on your retirement, lovely. Get, pop some pins in that side, like that. And then again, do the same the other side. So all the way around like that. And let's get that all lined up. So let's line up that edge there. Put the pin in. Line up that corner. There we go. Put the pin in. We've got to uh, start getting ready for Newcastle. We're off to Newcastle tomorrow. Uh, not tomorrow. Tomorrow. Next week. Off to, I was going to say, Sean, don't panic if you're watching. <laughs> uh, off to Newcastle. Sean's coming to Newcastle with me. Sarah is going to be in Cowbridge uh, for two days doing a pop up shop for Gamorgan quilters. I'm going to stitch down across, just straight the way across both of these edges now, okay? So over to the machine. <clears throat> I'm going to stitch down, okay? So I'm just going to use a quarter, uh, edge of foot, so three eighths of an inch, seam allowance on this, all the way down. So yeah, while well, Sean and I are up in Newcastle, Sarah is oh, where am I? Throwing clips everywhere. Uh, Sarah is going to be in Cowbridge. Why is that coming? Hang on, two seconds, guys. That is coming. Come on, lie flat. That's better. Does it want to lie flat? There we go. And then when I get to the webbing, I'm just going to reverse back over it just to make sure it's really nice and stable. Okay, and then all the way down the side. There we go. Lots of sewing. Oh, I don't blame you, lovely. How lovely to be able to have the time to do it now. Although, <coughs> everybody I know who is retired always says they don't know how they ever worked because they're busier now than when they retired. <laughs> and across. Oh, that's exactly, see, that's exactly what <laughs> Jackie and Carol are saying. I've just seen your comments. <laughs> uh, there we go. So I've got a uh, busy weekend. Uh, we've got, um, I'm working Friday, Saturday, and then I've got the boys, I've got my little ones on Saturday night, and then Sunday we're going to support Josh because he's doing the Cardiff Half Marathon, which is his first ever half marathon. So um, he's going to be doing that. Um, thank you so much to everybody who sponsored him. I know lots of you um, sponsored him. I really, really appreciate it. It's, uh, he's doing it for Shelter Cymru, which is an amazing charity. Um, so uh, I will put the link. I'm going to be completely cheeky. I will put the uh, <coughs> the link back up if you haven't sponsored him and you would like to you know even if it was just a pound it would just all help with his uh, fundraising right back over to the overhead uh second that you haven't stopped since retirement everybody says that they say they're busier than ever when they retire <laughs> there we go right pins are out 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring this over a second. Hang on, let me just get rid of the pins up there. Come on, get out of the way. Like that. And then we're going to turn this right side out. So pull this through like that. Okay, and then I've got, you can see I've got my handles showing now. And then we just want to iron this seam here. Okay, so give that a good press. Make sure it's set nicely. And roll that seam there. You could make the straps longer if you wanted to, if you want it to be able to you know, go over your shoulder. You could absolutely adapt this pattern and make it bigger as well. I've done quite a little one, but you know, um, is that Sandra, one of your colleagues is running in the half marathon and had to pull out injured. Oh, bless. Yeah, Josh was really worried because you know he broke his wrist and everything. So he he's a little bit like, no, I know I'm not gonna hit my target time because he, he wasn't able to run for a little while because he couldn't run with the, the main cast on. Um, so he's a bit he's a bit disappointed, but he's determined to finish it. So um, might be a bit slower than he normally does it, he would normally do it in, but he's determined he's going to do it. So right, okay, so what I've done is I've just ironed that top edge where you can see these straps are like that. You can see the straps are, are there. And then we're gonna go back to the sewing machine and we're gonna, to sew all the way around. Now, don't worry that these are raw edges here. We're going to sew about an eighth of an inch all the way around the whole thing, okay, just to hold it all in place. So, oh, hang on, back over we go. <coughs> and I'm going to go down this edge here. Now, I've got a new light in. Um, I've put a new light in here because it always seemed when I didn't eat, oh, is it frozen? No, it's not. Um, when I did an evening one, it was really dark at the sewing machine. So I have put a new light in, which hopefully isn't getting in the way, but hopefully is a bit brighter here for you guys. So, all the way along there, down that side. Okay, and then I'm gonna go there. Uh, your daughter used to steward the Cardiff Half Marathon. So when you have TV footage, ah, oh, lots of jokes. Past the night before, yeah, absolutely. We will be in Melbourne. Yes, we will. Yeah, we've got a crazy, crazy couple of weeks coming up. So Sean and I go to Newcastle on Thursday, and the Newcastle show is Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We're coming back on Monday. I'm going to Abergavenny Quilters on either Tuesday or Wednesday. I can't remember whether it's the Tuesday or the Wednesday. It's one of them. <laughs> um, we're doing a class at a pop-up shop there. Um, and then <coughs> we go on the Thursday. It must be the Tuesday we go to Abergavenny. And then Thursday, we're off to Melbourne. Uh, and we're at Melbourne's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So, yeah, it's... Um, it's going to be a crazy, crazy couple of weeks. Crazy couple of weeks. A lot of travel. And you're, obviously, you've got Sarah doing um, Tuesday. Yes, it is. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Sarah doing Cowbridge as well for the Glamorgan exhibition while we're in Newcastle. So, yeah, yeah. That's a, that's a craziness. It really is. <laughs> right, nearly there, all the way down this side. And all this is doing is just tacking the two fabrics together which is why I'm doing like a, an eighth of an inch just to hold it all together so nothing slips. It's bright, but easy to see. Brilliant. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, it was one of those ones. This area was always really dark, but it's because of the lighting in here at night. When's Melbourne? Melbourne is like the 18th, 19th of October. It's not long. It's um, Oh, I can't remember off the top of my head. It's like 18th or 19th. Abu Gavani Quilters, you might look over, look them up and pop over and see you. Oh, please do. Julia, I'll send you the address, lovely. I'll send you the address. Right, okie doke. So I've got something that looks like this now. I've sewn all the way around. Next thing we want to do is we want to make some marks. So I'm going to fold it in half like that, put these top edges together, and I just need to mark this bottom edge here. Okay, so I'm going to finger press, press it. Have you missed Cardiff? Quilters exhibition, they will have an exhibition of Nickers Ball Quilts. That's not Cardiff Quilters, lovely, that's Glamorgan Quilters, and that's the one that's going to be in Cowbridge. Um, Cardiff Quilters exhibition was last year, they only do them bi annually. Um, 
but yeah, the Nicholas Ball one is Glamorgan Quilters, and that's that's the Cowbridge one. Okay, right. So I've just marked that midway point there. Now we need to do. This is where like the folding element starts to come in. We're going to make some marks at the top here. So I'm going to measure in here six inches and make a little mark there. Okay. And then I want to draw a line, obviously with something that is removable, from that, from the mark I've just made to the centre point down here. Okay, let me just do it like that. Just my really just about fits. So I'm going to put a line down like that. Okay, so it's from the six inch line down to that centre point. Okay, and the same this side. So I'm going to measure in six inches like that there. And then from there all the way down to that point again like that okay and then I'm gonna flip it and do the same the other side okay so six inches in like that six inches in that side like that and then join them up so basically I'm drawing like a, a diamondy shape on the front and this is on the front remember this is the front the right side of the, of the outer of the fabric like that okay I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna fold it back along those lines now obviously if you've used a fricks on do not put an iron on this just finger press it or use your magic seam wand something like that just fold it along that drawn line like that pop a pin in to hold that in place and then I'm going to do this side so find that center piece there and let's fold it along that line like it's almost like a guideline we've created okay like that and then we're going to turn it and do the same this side so from that center point there find that line there it is give it a good finger press if you've got a um actually where have i got mine in here yeah if you've got a magic seam wand just run that down just give yourself a really nice you know press there or a seam roller something like that okay and then the other side here like that Hold that over. Where is it gone? There it is. Okay, so this is like the one of the foot, like the first fold of this bag. Okay, are you all with me so far? Is this all making sense? There we go. Right. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take it over the sewing machine. And I'm going to stitch by an eighth of an inch all the way down there. So basically, you're getting like this funny little faux piped bit. Okay. So I'm going to stitch all the way down from there to there and then back up the other side, down and across, okay? So, okay, over to the machine. Now, I wanna pick a spot just there, okay? Make sure you lock stitch, and then down we go. And just concentrate on keeping that top stitching really nice and neat. Hang on, I've got caught on my, on my mat. <laughs> okay. All the way down this side. Like that. If you need to break the thread and redo it, you can do. I'm just going to pivot round. And we're going to go up the side. Like that. All the way to the top there. So what's everyone else been up to? Anybody been making anything interesting? Who's had a go at the challenge? The scrappy challenge, anybody? Oh, just reverse there and then I'm going to go down the other side. Like I said, we've had one come in already, which is amazing. Uh, I don't know who it's from actually. Sarah just sent a picture earlier to say, oh, we've had the first one in, which is nice. All the way down like that. Down this side. And get to that. And then 
flip it again. Ooh, come on, rage again. Oh, that's going. That's it. I'm the top stitch down this side. Uh, yeah, it's in the process. You posted yours today. Oh, fab. Oh, we could have more arrived soon then. Amazing. Amazing. How difficult did you all find it with the uh, being completely random? Did it completely, did it freak you all out? Okay, you're about halfway through. Amazing. Oh, I'm so glad some of you are having a go at it. It's really, really nice of you all. Cool, right. Okay, back over here. Take those pins out, tuck them back in Dave. Like that. When we open this out now, okay, you've got like this really interesting little detail here. Give this another press now. That also gets rid of your Frixon pen if you need to. So give that a little press like that. And I'm pressing it out towards the, uh, the corner. Don't press it inwards, press it outwards. Okay, like that. There we go, that's one side. And let's do the other. I liked this bag because it also had, um, I kind of saw, um, I saw it on um, Pinterest, not this exact one, but the idea of folding like this. Um, and I kind of scaled it up because it was like a little tiny like gift bag thing this size. And I was just like, well, I wouldn't really use anything that size. It was like our itsy bitsy bag, you know, a little tiny thing. So I played around with the sizing and, the, and everything to uh, make it a more useful size bag. Right, okay. You started mine. Four box done, five more to go. It's not making a dent in your huge pile of scraps. <laughs> uh, not sewn together, not sure how they'll look then. Ah, oh, that's fine. No sewing for, sewing for you at a job application to finish on the weekend. Another five to finish by Monday. Oh, wow. Wowzers, missus. Right. Well, good luck with the job hunting, Natalie. What we're going to do now is we're kind of, uh, we're going to do a little bit of sort of like jiggery pokery with this. I want to pull this over basically so this little bit of faux piping runs along just comes in a little bit so this is what kind of makes it rounder so let me see if i can do it this way for you so you're going to kind of push it so push the handle here and it'll naturally make a stopping point you see just there hopefully you can see that so i push the handle in against the piping until it hits the that faux piping like that and you've got this little piece here okay so i'm just going to put a clip there for a second just to hold it while i do the same on the other side so again i'm going to push this in like that the the strap will then touch this like that okay and can you see this is still a straight line you've got this funny little cut outy bit here all right what we're going to do with that is we're going to fold that over okay so i'm just going to fold that over like that all right i will show you this again on the other side all right so again it's that idea that you'll fold in the fabric what this does it gives it a more rounder shape than it just being a flat bag okay because you're giving yourself like some some movement here in the top so i'm going to put some clips on like that and one in the middle there Okay, because we're going to stitch that down in a moment, but I'll show it you again the other side. Um, so I'm going to kind of push this in until it hits that binding. And can you, hopefully you can see that hits just about there. All right, like that. Just chuck a pin or something in there just to hold it in place now, and then push that one in like that. Give it a finger press and then we're going to flip this bit over okay like that and then pop some clips in okay so clips there and clips there okay now what we're going to do is we're just going to stitch along this edge here okay just to attach that all down and what that does can you see hopefully you can see it gives you a little bit more movement here a little bit more space which rounds the bag out okay so back over to the machine that's that bit's probably the only slightly tricky part of this the rest of it is very easy to do that this little bit here where you just want to make sure that it's all tucked in nicely so i'm going to put my needle in like that okay make sure you lock lock stitch or back stitch 
and then just gently sew along there. Take those clips out as you go. And I'm actually using the previous top stitch line as my guide, basically. Trying to keep it straight all the way across, like that. And then back stitch a weenie bit. It also gives the top of the bag a little bit more stability as well because you've got that thickness there. Okay, I'll chop the ends off in a minute. Other side now. <coughs> <coughs> oh, excuse me. This stupid, silly cough is just driving me potty. Got the needle in. Lock stitch, and then down we go this side. Come on, oh, we don't want to go. Hang on, what's it caught on? It's caught on something. Yeah. Oh, no, it's definitely caught on something. What's it caught on? Oh, I'm caught on something. Hang on a minute, guys. No, oh, there we go. I gave it a good yank in that. There we go, that's better. It is quite thick. If you've got a humper jumper, which I don't know if you've seen them, but they're amazing. Use one of those at this point. If you haven't, I might show you that next week. That next week, we've had some into the shop, and that's that's so cool. Right, back over we go. Okay, so uh, another feeling: looking for your first job in for, uh, job in fourteen years. Application forms are so demanding. They are. I mean, Josh and Alex have been applying for jobs left, right, and centre the last few months, and it's just crazy the amount of things you've got to put on a job job application nowadays. There we go. So I'm just cleaning up that edge a little bit. Put one there. And the same on this side. Ooh, one little bit there. Got little threads everywhere. <laughs> and just clean that one up there as well. Okay. Like. Oh, come on. There we go. Right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to turn this into actually that sort of like this folded bit. We're going to turn it into the actual bag, okay? So, we're going to put them right sides together. Now, we're going to use French seams on this. So, all of these rough edges are all going to disappear into French seams, which is a nice way to finish a bag. It's not, I know it's not something we'd normally do. So, I'm lining up the top edges again, making sure those corners are correct. Grab my clips back. Hi, Ali. How are you, lovely? Hopefully, you're well. Mm -hmm. And there as well. What I'm going to do is make sure that edge is nice and neat. Just put the clip in down there. That edge there is nice and neat. Clip in there. So, <coughs> <coughs> sorry. It was, well, it's not my sneezing, it's my coughing now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch, because we're going to French seam, so I'm going to stitch on that quarter of an inch that I did last time, all the way down both sides. Okay? So, over we go again. Oh, I know what I said to you, I was meant to tell you guys. Um, if we've had a, a cancellation for the April retreat, now both of the April retreats were sold out, completely sold out. But unfortunately we've had uh, three ladies, unfortunately not been able to come. So they, um, we've got three spaces available in April, nothing in November at all, I'm afraid, but in April we've got three spaces now available. So if you were thinking about jo they will go, once they go back on the website, they're going to go really quickly. So if you ladies are ever you know, thinking of joining us on a retreat, um, then do uh, go and grab those spaces while you can, because we won't have any, well, unless anybody else cancels, which you know I hope they don't have to, but um, April's been sold out for months, months and months. So if anybody fancies uh, coming on retreat, there are spaces again in April now. There we go, like that. So sew that with the right sides out this time because we're going to French seam it. So I've just stitched down quarter of an inch and then we're going to turn the whole thing inside out. So. Push that right the way through. Make sure you've got, in fact, <coughs> just clip where, <coughs> sorry, excuse me, where you've got this little bit of excess here, just clip that off now, okay, on those corners, 
just because you don't want it showing through when you do your French seam and then turn it inside out. So I'll push through there like that. And that side there. Oh God, I've got all sorts of threads going on now because I'm in so in different colors all day today. Okay, and then get rid of any of those excess threads there as well. Make sure this seam is nicely pushed out like that. And then this time we're gonna sew it 3 eighths of an inch all the way down to enclose that raw edge, okay? It helps when you're applying to the same people as automatic fills in the form for you. <laughs> it's changing the personal statement you struggle with. Uh, six of the jobs I'm applying with are for three different companies. You just, oh, get, get on with it, missus, come on. You know you gotta do it. <laughs> That's my bit of encouragement, Natalie, okay? Come on. <laughs> right, there we go. So that one's going on there. That's going on there. And then another one on that edge there. And by that one clips, got this one. And now I'm gonna stitch down the sides with a 3 8 to enclose those edges, okay? And then we're gonna box the bottoms and we're done. Okay, so edge of foot this time all the way down you could use a coordinating thread if you want to I haven't bothered to change my thread I'm being lazy I'll just tuck all that in there make sure it's kind of lined up which is moved slightly there we go got it right. I've got a bit of mummy <coughs> mummy guilt today because uh it's drew's birthday soon as on the 10th of october and i realized today that i'm not going to see him at all normally even if he's working we'd <coughs> <coughs> sorry excuse me my voice really is going i would uh you know i'd see him at least the day before or the weekend but because of newcastle and malvern i'm away for like two and a half weeks so I'm not going to see him, so I've got a bit of mummy guilt that I've been, I'm a naughty mummy and I'm not going to see my boy for his birthday. <laughs> right, that's that bit of the French seaming done. So again, when you've, yeah, you've got more time, go around and do all your threads. Put it back through to the outside like that. And you can see you've got nice neat edges now of thread that I need to trim off, but you've got neat edges on the front and neat edges on the inside. Push out those corners. Now you could stop there if you wanted to and just keep it as like a little tote bag, but I think it's nicer when the corner, the bottom is boxed and you've actually got a lot more space in it. I think once you, once we box it, so that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna just make sure that's all nice and flat out like that. And then we're gonna do a two inch square either side. Okay, so I'm gonna grab my ruler and measure a two inch square in this bottom corner here. Like that. Again, if you want a deeper bag or a shallower bag, you can absolutely vary the size that you box, but two seem to work for this, this size that I did. There we go. Uh, went to a workshop today on interview techniques. One of the examples was how would you get an elephant in a van, really? Oh, I know. With with a banana? Tempt him in? <clears throat> Should that be on the inside? No, no, this is on the outside, lovely. Because we're going to French seam this bit as well. So you're going to, I want this on the outside. So like that there. Again, we're going to do two inches, flip it over and do two inches on this side as well like that how would i get an elephant in a van oh i don't know it depends on the size of the van i suppose is he a trained elephant is he a wild elephant <laughs> i mean if he you know if he's a wild elephant he might not want to go in the van it might require i don't know a tranquilizer dart or something <laughs> but if he's trained i know just offer him offer him a banana, a banana or something <laughs> sweet treat a donut <laughs> right what i'm going to do now so i've marked these on the outside and I'm gonna open this out like that, just like you would normally when you're boxing a corner. And you've got a nice straight edge now to follow. 
The only thing you want to do is just make sure that that side seam is hitting the bottom seam here. Well, there's not a seam on the bottom, but there's a crease. So just make sure they're lined up like that. Okay, and put a pin through here. We're going to be stitching across there. I'm going to do the same this side. So there's the bottom seam. Make sure that's hitting the... Come on. Come on. Doesn't want to move. There we go. Got it. Like that. Your little piping bits as well. Make sure they're sort of not catching and they're going inwards too. Okay, just to keep that nice bit. Did you get <laughs> Did you get an answer? What was the answer? Or was it just subjective? Or was it just to get your ideas on a, you know, is it... Is it a, there's, there's lots of variables. That's what I'd want to know, see. I'd be like, right, okay, is he trained? Is he not trained? Is it a baby elephant? Is it, you know, is it a... <coughs> Is it a pink elephant? <laughs> you know, what, what size is the van? There we go. Right, so all I'm going to do now is stitch on the line. So I'm going all the way down along the line, like that. Or to that side, and back stitch. What was your answer, Maria? What, how, what did you say? <laughs> okay, and then I'm going to do the same on this side, like that. Again, just stitch on that line. I quite like the idea of using French seams on bags so that you don't have to worry about turning anything through or anything like that. It's um, we're loving this bag. Not too fussy, but looks fancy. Yeah, thanks, lovely. I yeah, it's got nice little elements to it. Um, without, but it's actually very very quick to make. So which is good. Right now we're going to chop off this excess all here. So I'm going to chop it off with you know just under a quarter inch seam allowance. You don't want too much seam allowance, okay? And do the same the other side, like that. Yeah, I really like this little detail. I've really got to go through and get rid of all my threads, but I'll do that in a minute. <laughs> and get rid of that side there. Okay, and then we're gonna turn it through and do that French seam again, like that. Uh, <coughs> Apparently there was no right or wrong answer. I said he was a toy elephant and somebody else said, why would you want to put an elephant in the van in the first place? Well, true. What are you doing to this poor elephant? <laughs> right, so I've turned it through like this. And then again, like we did on the side one, <coughs> roll that seam up like that. And then we're gonna stitch three eighths of an inch across there, okay? Which will enclose all those raw edges. Yeah, no, I think uh, I think that question would require um, a lot of um, a lot of what what ifs for me. <laughs> you know, is it a real elephant? Like you said, is it a toy elephant? What is it? Right, like that. I'm going to stitch down across there now. Okay. I suppose it's to see how you think, isn't it? You know, see uh, see how you'd handle. Uh, a random situation. So I'm lock stitching there and using edge of foot again all the way down like that and I'm just going to come off this edge here get to that edge and back stitch. Oh Eileen you should have been here this week. I drove on Wednesday, I came back from Barry because I had to go and pick up uh, new contact lenses. Um, I've got very focal contact lenses which I am loving at the moment. Although they turned my eyes green instead of blue. I went into the shop earlier, saw Sarah, and she was like, have you got those new lenses in? I was like, yes. And uh, she said, your eyes are no longer blue. They've gone green. So they must be like really tinted ones or something. But yeah, Eileen, I was driving back from Barry yesterday and they were filming in Dennis for, for Gavin and Stacey. Um, I think I think tomorrow is the last day though of it, of the filming. But yeah, all the road was all blocked off. You couldn't get down there, so... Right, there we go, like that, just uh, get rid of those little bits there, and then when we pull, push this through, now your bag is done, there we go, I've got lots of threads to get rid of, okay, but my little bag is now done, so it's a really nice, you've got a nice lot of room in there, Okay, you could add patch pockets and all onto it if you wanted to. You could. I mean, I'm, I've got to give this a, you know, a good press. 
but you could just tack down that side seam if you wanted to as well um but i want a cute little bag for taking all of your like you're taking your lunch into work or you know taking to uh, you know packing up with a project for if you're going to class or whatever really nice you know be nice for uh, christmas time you know make a couple of little bags fill them with some you know some sweets treats and bits and pieces okay so yeah that's uh that's the little aura aura carter keep saying it wrong bag but i just really like the fact you get these nice little details these little folded like origami folded details particularly on the side there you get this lovely lovely detail going on um and you know you can scale it up you know scale it up any sort of size you know, make it bigger longer if you wanted to like i said i've used the donut one on this one and then this one i used you can see this one's much nicer because it's all pressed i gave this one a really good press in <laughs> um you saw, yeah, I didn't actually see anything lovely. I just saw the crew outside and the security guards as I was driving past. I wish I had. But um, yeah, they had the, the cameras. They were obviously filming something on the drive. Um, yeah, this one's actually a, a lot neater than this one because, like I said, it's I've, I haven't pressed this yet. I would go through and press all these seams really nicely. But super cute. And you can get loads in there. They're a really nice, big size. You, know, you get well look Dave, Dave can easily live in there Dave can easily live in there you know get a good project in there along with lots of other stuff um and a, I think a fun way of using these little you could add I suppose if you wanted to you could add a could you add a little strap in there so you could close it so it's more like a handbag or just a cam snap or something or a popper just there there might be a way of adding a zip in I haven't thought about that but I would do uh, would need interfacing if it went bigger. Yeah, probably lovely. Yeah, if you went bigger, I would probably put some interfacing in it or maybe some H640, you know, the fusible um, fleece. Um, let me come over here a second. Yeah, I'd probably put uh, H6, if you went much bigger than that. I mean, it's really sturdy as is, but if I went bigger, I'd probably put some interfacing or, like I said, H640 or something. Or a magnetic, yeah, a magnetic clasp would work nicely. Yeah, you could put a little magnetic class there, couldn't you? That would be cool. Um, there you go, that's the donut one. Which, again, just needs a good press. I need just to get it onto the, the, big, um, the big ironing board and give that a good press. But I just liked this little sort of idea of folding the fabric and everything. You feel inspired to try the project? Oh, fabulous. Oh, please do, lovely. And if you do have a go at making anything, as always, post it into Gigglers. We love to see what you're doing. I need to just stitch that down as well. I missed a little bit when I was doing that. <laughs> but, yeah, very easy to do. Really cute. I think, you know, I, we've got Christmas coming up. Little ideas, two fat quarters and a bit of, well, you don't even need the webbing because out of two fat quarters, you can actually make your own straps. Really quick and easy little present. You could put, you know, just like a bottle of lint, you know, a box of lint chocolates in there or maybe if you were like you know maybe doing like a food hampery type thing you could put some nice biscuits or teas and things in them and give them as a present so um and then the people have got a little present as well haven't they in the back that's it for me tonight my darlings what's the fabric range again it's this one is called snack shack sorry <laughs> i couldn't remember it for a second snack shack i don't know if it's on the website yet um <coughs> i i love this one this this I just think is so funky. I mean, it's it's so crazy. It's almost ugly, but in a really really good way. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's that just just good. I love it. I love how crazy it is. Really do. I like yeah. The boys saw it earlier and they were like, oh that's cool, mum. So yeah, it's got the boys seal of approval. Yeah, they don't very often say anything's cool about fabric so the fact they quite like this one you know if you've got maybe a chef in the family imagine like a nice new apron or something made in it or oven gloves or you know um some hot you know those lovely hot pad holders we made they'd be really good for that as well you know make you know, don't just think about them in terms of the bags this fabric would be great for anything um the taco one i'm gonna have to do josh is obsessed with tacos so i'm gonna have to do something for the taco one for josh even if it's just a tablet stand for his phone or something, you know. So anyway, that's it for me, my darlings. Sarah's back tomorrow at one o'clock. Um, I hope to be here next Tuesday. 
Um, we sh- I will probably do one on Tuesday. Probably won't be one Wednesday though, because I we've got to go to Newcastle on Thursday and we're going to be packing the van and all the rest of it. So I will probably see you Tuesday next week. Um, but Sarah's here tomorrow at one o'clock and she's going to finish the No Doubt pouch um, because I know something went a bit awry because she's really cross with herself because they look so good, the ones she's done. But um, she's going to finish that off with you tomorrow, guys, okay? So I'll see you next week. Have a lovely, lovely weekend uh, and take care. Bye.